Antonio Vivaldi is best known for his work, The Four Seasons. Across his 800 or so works, these four concertos have gained immense popularity. But there's a fascinating aspect about them that's often overlooked. Each of the four season concertos has an accompanying Italian sonnet which tells a story about that season. And here's the exciting bit. The music and the poetry work together perfectly, almost like a movie and its soundtrack. Vivaldi's ability to weave these sonnets into music is undeniably remarkable. Vivaldi even went as far as writing lines from the poems above the sheet music so that his players would know exactly what they were depicting at any given moment. No one knows if the sonnets are Vivaldi's or somebody else's, but one thing is certain. The music that Vivaldi wrote truly captures the essence of each poem, bringing to life its characters, events, and the emotions within. Let's dive into the first concerto, Spring. The piece begins with the opening line, festive spring has arrived. And the opening melody perfectly captures this thought to a T. Vivaldi then explores the new season using the sonnet's lines and various musical leitmotifs. First comes a birdsong leitmotif, three solo violins trilling together, each marked with the description, singing of the birds. Following this birdsong, breezes and flowing brooks are portrayed. Suddenly, a thunderstorm motif is introduced, accompanied by a virtuosic solo violin section. As the storm subsides, the birdsong theme reappears tentatively, this time in a minor key, as if these birds are wondering, is the storm truly over? Fear not, the festive motive returns, culminating in a final joyful declaration of spring's arrival. In the second movement, Vivaldi takes his storytelling even further, assigning specific roles to each instrument group. And this is a technique he employs throughout all the Four Season Concertos. This movement evokes a sense of drowsiness, with the sonnet painting a picture of a tranquil meadow, murmuring leaves, and a slumbering goat herd beside his dog. The first and second violins embody the leafy branches blowing in the wind. The viola represents the barking of the goatherd's dog, and the solo violin portrays the snoozing goatherd himself. These motifs, played by their respective instruments, imbue the entire movement with this dreamy, languid atmosphere. What truly sets the Spring Concerto apart is the way that Vivaldi masterfully orchestrates this music to align with the sonnet. His ensemble is relatively small, comprised of two violin groups, violas, cellos, a keyboard instrument, and the soloist. Yet he manages to depict an entire season using what would be considered a miniature chamber orchestra by today's standards. Even without the use of woodwinds, brass, or percussion, Vivaldi brings to life dogs, birds, nymphs, shepherds, storms, and dances. And this leads us to an intriguing realization. Descriptive music doesn't require a large orchestra. It's easy to assume that a wide array of instruments is necessary to portray a scene, a character, or an emotion, but Vivaldi demonstrates that it is entirely possible to explore grand themes with a small ensemble. He does this throughout the entire Four Seasons, showcasing the power of creative ingenuity. Quickly, if you're passionate about music, Apple Music Classical is designed for you. It's a treasure trove of expert picks, playlists which cater to your tastes, and opportunities to learn and explore more of the music you love. Why not start with their playlists on Vivaldi, Baroque music, or programmatic music? Click the link below to start your journey now. Let's dive into summer. The sonnet for this concerto presents a single, continuous story, describing a sweltering summer's day that swiftly transforms into a ferocious, devastating storm. The first movement begins with these lines and a lethargic musical theme. Under the heat of the burning summer sun, languish man and flock, the pine is parched. 
The heat is so intense that it seems the instruments can barely muster the strength to play more than two or three notes at a time. Suddenly, birds start to sing. First a cuckoo, then a turtle dove, and then a goldfinch, each with their names written over their entrance in the score. However, these themes lack the cheerfulness of spring's birdsong. The heat is overwhelming, and there's an unmistakable sense of fatigue and disconnection. A refreshing new theme emerges as the sonnet describes a gentle breeze, but it's suddenly interrupted by a fierce north wind. With the instruments playing rapid, frenzied, demi semi quaver figures. After the wind dies down, we hear the solo violin representing a weeping shepherd, reflecting the following lines from the sonnet Because overhead lies the fierce storm and his destiny. The violin's peculiar, sorrowful chromatic melody captures the shepherd's fear and apprehension of the looming storm. The north wind reappears, and with a violent surge, the first movement comes to an end. So let's be honest here. Without the context of the sonnet, the music might not feel very summary. The sudden tempo changes, irrelevant seeming passages, and abrupt mood swings can make this concerto seem a bit bizarre. This reveals another crucial aspect of program music context is key. Once you understand the story behind the music, it makes a lot more sense and it's easier to connect. With its message. Understanding the context also helps musicians to interpret the music accurately. For instance, consider the Turtle Dove song from the first movement. Without this context, you might assume as a performer that this phrase has a somewhat seductive quality. However, knowing that this is actually the innocent call of a turtle dove gives the performer an entirely different perspective on how to interpret this phrase. Vivaldi demonstrates that being aware of the context can significantly alter how we listen to, perform, and compose programmatic music. The first movement of autumn is among the well oops. The first movement of autumn is among the more well-known movement. The first movement of autumn is among the well oh my god. The first movement of autumn is among the well oh my god for God's sake. Okay. <laughs> Focus. The first movement of autumn is among the. <laughs> what is wrong with me? The first movement of autumn is among the more well-known movements of the four seasons, depicting a joyful, drunken harvest celebration. However, I want to hone in on autumn's adagio molto movement, perhaps the weirdest movement in the four seasons. You'd expect autumn to be a pleasant, bountiful season, right? Not this movement. The music of the Adagio Molto consists of a haunting melody, unsettling harpsichord accompaniment, and unpredictable chromatic harmonies, leaving listeners wondering what's going on here. Even stranger, the accompanying sonnet lines don't seem menacing at all. The sonnet reads Each peasant seizes his dance and song. The mild air gives pleasure, and the season invites many to enjoy a sweet slumber. The only additional clue Vivaldi provides is a comment above each instrument's part the sleeping drunks. Huh? This strange mismatch between the music and the sonnet can be really quite confusing, but it actually showcases Vivaldi doing something quite fascinating. He is delving into emotions and stories in unconventional ways. The words of the sonnet make us expect relaxing music, describing a peaceful sleep and the soothing air of autumn. But instead, the music describes a disturbing, dreamless, drunken oblivion. What Vivaldi accomplishes with this surprising perspective is an invitation for us to broaden our perceptions of how scenes, situations, or moments can be conveyed through music. And this prompts us to question our understanding of how scenes and emotions should be depicted with musical compositions. Is a drunken peasant's sleep peaceful or disturbing? Does he feel soothing bliss 
or a dark oblivion. We can take it further. Does music for a battle scene have to be epic? Does a moment of sorrow have to have a sad score? Does a passionate love scene have to be accompanied by luscious strings? Vivaldi's genius makes us look beyond the obvious, encouraging us to explore more imaginative, captivating ways of using music to tell stories. The last concerto in this series, Winter, is a challenging work to perform. Composed in cold F minor, it is packed with incredibly fast passages, sudden mood shifts and intense emotions. The final movement offers a taste of what the entire concerto is like, and as with the other concertos in the Four Seasons, it also has plenty of descriptive captions. It starts with the sonnet depicting a person slowly walking on ice, then carefully tiptoeing across the slippery surface, and finally beginning to hurry at risk of falling. The music captures the walker's progress, stumbling, cautious, rushing, and ultimately tumbling, with a descending scale played in unisons and octaves by everyone, accompanied by the description, falling to the ground. The solo violin introduces a new, urgent theme, labelled as running hard, playing over sustained notes held by the tutti violins, representing ice. New ideas come and go, but the urgency builds and soon we see why. The ice cracks and opens, but the walker manages to escape just in time. Suddenly, the mood changes. We are no longer by a frozen lake, but back inside, hearing the Sirocco, a dry Mediterranean wind through the door. It all seems to be calming down, but Vivaldi isn't finished yet. The north wind arrives and blows fiercely, depicted by rapid demi semiquaver figures, just like the summer storm. We hear all the winds in battle as the soloist and ensemble struggle against each other in a turbulent, lightning-fast passage until they all join together and race towards the end of the movement. Just before the final cadence, the poem concludes, This is winter, but it brings joy. The tricky key of F minor, the breakneck speed, and the intense emotional range of this concerto make it a demanding work for a violinist to perform. But when we listen to it, we find that the emphasis is on the imagery, the sounds and emotions of winter, rather than just virtuosity. This reveals something interesting. Although Vivaldi employs virtuosity here, it serves as a means to an end, and not an end in itself. Don't get me wrong, virtuoso playing is an amazing part of classical music, and it's always awe-inspiring to watch a virtuosic performance. But what we see here is that, in these concertos, the primary aim of the music is to tell a story, and Vivaldi uses the skills of the virtuoso violinist as a means to convey that story. Virtuosity becomes the means, not merely the end. As we see here, virtuosity can be a powerful tool in a composer's arsenal, used to enhance the telling of a story, just as Vivaldi does with the solo violin in winter, and indeed throughout all of these Four Season concertos. Vivaldi's Four Seasons have a great depth once you understand the stories behind them, and they can teach us a lot about how music and stories should work together. Digging beneath the surface of these renowned pieces uncovers remarkable insights into program music, and transports us into another world, where a handful of string instruments and four sonnets can employ enchanting melodies, imaginative concepts, and thrilling virtuosity to vivid vividly depict a way of life from centuries past. This is the app designed for classical. Apple Music Classical takes your listening experience to new heights. Whether you're new to classical or a seasoned listener, you can use the tailored playlists, expert recommendations, and companion guides to take you on your classical journey. This app makes exploring the world of classical music accessible, immersive, and hugely enjoyable. It has the world's largest classical music catalogue, a powerful search 
watch designed specifically for classical nuances and the highest audio quality, with options for immersive spatial audio in Dolby Atmos. And all of it is included with your Apple Music subscription. So click the link below to learn more about Apple Music Classical.